This is a highly requested video. Uh, I'm not really a YouTuber. I've never done this before. I usually make short form videos, uh, but a lot of people have been asking for an in-depth tutorial on how to use Incarnate to make their fantasy maps. So here we are. If you don't know me, my name is Kate. I'm a fantasy cartographer, which is kind of a crazy job to have, but here we are. I'm also an author and that's how I started making maps. It was for my books. I've been doing this for about seven years on and off, uh, with the last three years being very heavily fantasy map focused. I started making maps for my books back in 2017. And so here we are now, 2024, and Carnet is what I've been using since then. And they've come out with a lot of updates. This video in particular is gonna be going over the pro version of Incarnet because there is so much to learn there. When you first open up Incarnate, they have so many tools that are available and a lot of times it just becomes overwhelming. When I first started, my maps were not the prettiest, um, but eventually I got to a point where I'm really happy with how they look and I get a lot of people asking how I do it. I really want to go over the technical side of Incarnate and all of the different tools that it provides you. So when you first open up Incarnate, this is what you're going to see. This is essentially your homepage of all of the maps that you've worked on. If you've never used it before, obviously this is going to be blank. Up here is your create new map, so that's where you're going to start off. When you go to that, you're going to have a bunch of different options. These essentially are Incarnate's presets that help you get started in the right place. Keep in mind that whatever preset you choose is not actually going to affect what you can and can't use in your map. So let's say you select Parchment World now and decide later on that you want to add color to it. That's not a problem. You can absolutely do that. This is just your preset of where you're going to start. I make world maps, and so I always start with Fantasy Map, which this is their updated Fantasy Map world. It's going to give you this option, resolution, aspect ratio. Uh, for the sake of my computer not dying as I try to record this, we're going to go with a low editing resolution. I apologize, my little tiny MacBook Pro cannot handle all of this programming at once. I usually do the basic landscape to start off as well. So this is what it's going to look like when it first opens. Uh, this is your starting point. Now you'll see there's no land here yet. This is all ocean. It'll automatically start you off with this mask tool. We're going to get to that first. So the mask tool is how you add and subtract land. And Carnet doesn't have a way for you to add water. Water is just the background. So right off the bat, you see this. We have add and subtract. We've got roughness and we have mask effects. There's also this smooth here. We'll show you in a second. So this is your brush. If it's selected to add, you're going to be able to add land. Now subtract, obviously, lets you subtract land. This brush size changes the size of your brush. Kind of understandable. Let's get into this. The roughness is basically these edges around your land and how smooth or rough those are going to be. If you set that down to three, you're going to see the difference here. See how those edges are a lot tinier and more rigid. Now if you set that size up higher, this is kind of what that's going to look like. This smooth tool right here is going to give you that sort of shape. So the edges are going to be less rounded. Now over here, you've got your edge, your circle, or your grid. The edge is what gives you shapes like this. If you go to the circle, you're going to have a smooth edge to your land. The grid blocks look like this, and they let you add in grids. You've also got these rectangles, ellipses, and polygons, which essentially let you do this. Now you also have the bucket fill and the move area, which is new. Let's say you draw a shape like this. You can then go to the bucket fill, and fill it in. Now, move area is a new tool that I absolutely adore. It essentially lets you select a landmass and move it around. After looking at that, we're going to go into these mask effects. As you can see here, Incarna already has some presets, uh, so let's take a look at those. These essentially are what define the edges of your land, uh, shadows, or ripple effects. So if we say go to dark coastline, that's what that's going to look like. You also have things like simple coastline or light ripples. These are presets. This is where you're going to customize those things. Right here is your stroke. This is what that is. It's like that outline on the outside of your land. Not to be confused with the outline, which looks like this. You also have outer and inner shadows. Uh, I'm going to toggle these to show you what they are. This is the outer shadow. It's that like light blue around the land. And this is the inner shadow. It's that darkness that's kind of on the inside of the land right now. Ripples are your waves. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make those bigger so you can take a look at what those look like. These can all be adjusted. You can change the colors. You can change the opacities. I recommend playing around with this. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You can also get rid of these mass effects entirely, and you're going to end up with sort of a flat looking land like this. This is really helpful if you're doing parchment maps or something like that. Next up, we're going to take a look at the brush tool. This is essentially your colors for the land and the water. Automatically, it goes to foreground, and this is the default foreground color for the fantasy map. Right here, you've got this thing that says open catalog. This catalog is all of the different colors you can choose for any of the map styles. This is why I say you're not actually married to a style once you select it in the beginning. You can go into Parchment World and choose a parchment texture and use it for your map. 
Just for the sake of this, I'm gonna pick one of these. We've got a dark wasteland here. So now that I have this selected, I can paint it onto the land like this. Now, if I want to change the color of the water, I would go to background and I can do that as well. Keep in mind that when background is selected, it's only going to paint on the background, not the foreground and vice versa. Now you also have top, which will go over both background and foreground. You can also favorite these if you want to, or you can erase anything that's on the top if you click that erase button. Now these are also fully customizable too, which are all of these settings and the advanced settings. Brush size, once again, self-explanatory, it's gonna change the size of the brush. This right here is your opacity, and this is softness. Now softness is automatically at that one. If you bring that softness down, you're gonna get lines that look like this. They're essentially a lot sharper and they don't blur the edges. Just like with the mask tool, you have this edge and you have the roughness settings. Here's kind of what that looks like. And you have grid and you have rectangles and ellipses, same things that you have with the mask tool. You also have this fill option. This is super helpful if you want to fill the entire map. Obviously, let's say I want to change the foreground, select foreground, select fill, and it'll change all of it. Now down here in the placement settings or advanced settings, uh, you've got a couple of different things. Just for the sake of showing you this, I'm going to go back to our green. So this texture scale essentially changes the zoom of it. Uh, I'll show you. You can change essentially how close up or how far away your color is. I, it's the pattern. I don't really know how to describe it, uh, but you can see what that looks like. And obviously that's going to change exactly how it looks. Uh, that would be closer up. And that's the farther away. You can also rotate that pattern or offset it. Honestly, I don't really mess with those much. Uh, I kind of like the patterns as they are in Incarnate, but that is something that you can edit. We also have the color. This I do use fairly often. I'm going to pick a pretty vibrant color to kind of show you what this looks like. So right now I have this blue selected. I can now change the hue of that to any color that I want. You also can edit saturation, brightness, and contrast, all of which are extremely helpful. So now that I've edited the water to look how I want, I can go to the background and fill and change the color of my background. I'm gonna go back to normal and here we are. There's also the color option, which lets you just pick a color without any pattern to it. And you can do all the same settings with that color. Now we're gonna move on to the stamp tool. This is the one you're probably gonna use the most often. It's where you're gonna find mountains and trees and hills and decorations and all of that kind of stuff. Now this catalog is absolutely massive. We cannot go through the whole thing, but here's a look of everything that's in there. You of course have your fantasy world, which is automatically open for us. You've got every stamp from every world available to you, including things like sci-fi battle maps, which is new. So these are separated into sections. We've got core, we've got decorations, we've got settlements, etc. You can also just select up here and see all of them in one place. As you can see, there are an insane amount of stamps that you can use. Honestly, you can do almost anything with Incarnate. It's incredible. Uh, let's just say that you want to add mountains to your map. So we're going to go and select mountains. Let's go with these guys. So once you select a stamp, it's going to show up and then you can place that wherever you want. Now you can see we've got things like the scale, which is going to be the size of your stamp. Moving this up or down changes the size uh, and I recommend playing around with this. And just like everything else, you've got the opacity, you've also got a rotation and you've got a layer. Now, Incarnate automatically puts things on a layer for you. Um, so mountains, trees, all that kind of stuff are automatically going to be on whatever layer they need to be. That being said, if you want something out front, you can put it up on a higher la layer. Or if you want something farther back, lower layer. For example, if I want to put like a mountain here, but I want it to be in front of the other ones, all I need to do is select this layer, bring it up. And there we go. Now we're putting things on top of the other mountains. You can also flip them horizontally or vertically, which is nice, especially the horizontal one when it comes to things like these mountains, if you want them facing a different direction. Now, here we have a blend mode. To be honest with you, I don't play around with this much, but it does give you some options. As you'll see with this stamp right here, when I change that blend mode, it's going to do different stuff to it. To be honest with you, this isn't something I really use, but it is there and it is an option. Now, you can also blur them or change their shadows, which are super helpful when you're doing things like battle maps. And of course, we have advanced settings, which, oh boy. Now, right here, you've got place single or place multiple. Right now, it's set to auto. Obviously, as you hover over those, it tells you exactly what it does. Um, for the most part, I have it set to auto to where if I click, they place, or if I click and drag, they do multiple. Now, this area and density are also up here at the top of the screen. This is really helpful, especially for forests, but I'll show you with mountains. This area lets you select a radius, and then the density is how many, essentially. As you can see, here's my area, and this is the density. And then if I want to place a whole bunch, bam, there we go. You can also randomize the angle when doing this, which I've never done, but sure, or randomize the flip. 
And just like you have with the brush, you can also change the saturation, the brightness, the contrast, or you can change the width and the height. Changing the width and height can be helpful depending on what the angle is you're going for and what exactly you need for your map. And just like with the other one, you do have a favorites area. This little random stamps right here, if you wanna deselect that and just have the exact same mountain over and over again, you can do that. This is an option for any stamp that comes in a group like this. You'll notice that some stamps don't come in groups and you can't do that, uh, but for trees, mountains, stuff like that, I usually have that on. Next up, we have text. Uh, I don't think I need to go into too much detail with this. This is kind of what you're gonna find on any creative system that uses text. You've got a couple of different fonts. You've got bolding, size, color, outline, shadow, and a bunch of other settings. Just like with other things, you have that blend mode. You can change spacing, you can change line height, you can change alignment. Now over here, this is a newer tool. We have the line tool. This is not the same thing as the path tool, although you're gonna see some similarities. The line tool allows you to draw. You can actually use the textures of stamps or you can do colors. You've also got this, which is pretty cool. Uh, I haven't really played around with it. Oh, I see, it, it essentially, okay. So this one from what I'm seeing, oh, it, it'll draw over stamps, okay. I have not played around with that. Um, and then this is the same exact thing. It's, I'm changing the settings of it right now. So for this, let's say that I have a map that needs to have a stone wall. So I went into my catalog and I selected that specific wall. Now, just like the other things, you can change the hue and the saturation and the contrast. You can also change the size and then you can draw. This is very helpful for battle maps I've found. Now, I also use this for paths, as you can see here. In my fantasy maps, I'll draw paths through the mountains and that sort of thing, um, and this is what I use. Now, next up, we have the shape tool. This is something that I haven't played around with much, but I can show you what I've used it for. In this map in particular, uh, I used this tool to create these sort of frames around the different uh, areas. So to make a frame like that, I selected the circle, uh, I selected what I wanted that circle to be made of, and then I drew the circle like this. You can then change, you know, the scale and all of the other settings that you can change it basically everywhere else in Incarnate. And if you want to change what it actually looks like, you can go in, select something different, and it'll automatically update if you have that one selected. Now, once again, you've got the same sort of things. You've got brush, you've got nodes, which is super helpful. That allows you to adjust something that you've already created. You've also got portals, which is really nice. <laughs> Next up, we have paths. Like I said, this is similar to that line, uh, but it's a little more specific. The path tool is specifically going to be these little lines that you can draw. Once again, you can change things like the width, you can change the opacity, you can change the shapes if you want a line or if you want dots, shadows, colors, layers, everything else that you can change on the earlier things. Next up, we have the note tool, which is extremely helpful for world building. This allows you to select an area of the map, place a note, and then create, you know, whatever note you need there. So let's say I want to put the name of this place, and then you can write whatever you need to about it, you know, the people, the culture, anything that you are creating in your world building, and then you can reference that later. So when you're working on other areas of your map, you're not going to see your notes, but then when you select notes again, you can view them. Next up, we have the grid. Um, this is helpful, especially for battle maps. Once again, you've got the different shapes that you can use. Um, you can select how many columns, how many rows, offsets. Right here is where you can also resize slash new map for region. This is helpful if you just make, say, a large world map and then decide that you want to make a regional map. You can select like this and create a new map. Now, the filters are sort of presets. You can also create your own. Some of them are nice, like these cloud ones. You've also got a lot of different frames, that kind of thing. These can give your map a certain look if you're looking for something specific. Last but not least, we have the generate tool. This will automatically generate continents for you. Uh, if you're new, you don't really know where to start, or maybe you're just playing around. By doing this, it will clear the other things that you have, so keep that in mind. And there we go, Incarnate has generated a world for me. This is a great thing to start with if you're not sure where to go. And then last, we've got the little magnifying glass. Um, this is essentially just moving around, zooming, whatever. Keep in mind, there's also the select tool up here. This lets you select anything that you already have. You can move it around, drag it, whatever. The only thing it will not select is land. To do that, you will have to be in your mask tool. Honestly, I hope this answers any questions that people have. Incarnate is an incredible tool. It can just be difficult to use at times. I know that all this stuff can be intimidating and it's really great to just know what you're looking at, at least. I honestly love Incarnate as a program. Uh, like I said, I've been using it for a long time and I used it for free for a long time as well. They have a free version. This video is very practical. I plan to make ones in the future on the more creative side of map making, but today we're just going over the practicality of Incarnate.